If you plan on ice fishing in the southeast, we're going to talk about walleye populations, perch populations, pike populations, and crappie populations with fisheries supervisor BJ Kratz. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. BJ, how are things shaping up in the southeast as far as ice fishing? Pretty good. You know, we had pretty good ice formation this year. Um, that even though we had the blizzard, thankfully, I guess there was enough wind to keep things from freezing up as that snow fell. So, in general, you know, at, at present, we're dealing with 9 to 11 inches of ice on most of our lakes. Uh, fish populations are in good shape. You know, and as far as opportunities go, um, you know, say 20 years ago, we're about twice as many opportunities on the landscape, especially, you know, perch and walleye opportunities. They've really grown the last, you know, 20 years or so. So let's talk, let's move into fish populations. How are walleyes doing in the southeast then? Good, you know, um, we've got that Coteau area around Cleveland and Medina and stuff, those lakes have really blossomed nicely. You know, whether they bite or not, that's up, up depends on the year. Uh, but, but there's certainly good numbers of, of walleyes in those lakes and, and perch for that matter too. So, and then there's, you know, the far southeast has decent walleye populations too. Um, you know, the unfortunate part about that is a lot of times there's rough fish mixed in down there too, so that could be more challenging, but on the other hand, you, you have the opportunity to large fish when you have, uh, you know, rough fish populations too because they, they tend to feed those fish and get them to a bigger size, so. Uh, BJ, let's move into Northern Pike. Yep. Northern Pike, uh, as most people probably know now, we really don't do a lot of stocking anymore. Uh, we found that with what Mother Nature provides us each each spring or every other spring or so, we get enough runoff to facilitate natural reproduction and that's worked out pretty well. Um, most most often in the lakes we get, you know, an age class off every four or five years and that's usually sufficient enough to, um, you know, result in some pretty good pike fisheries. You know, the small systems, even like the small impoundments that have been around for a while, those can be really good uh, on a small scale basis and then we have the larger sloughs and so forth, you know, around that column area, uh, you know, South Flood Lake and, and that Bernston Slough is a new one that, that's kind of popped up lately and um, they're definitely out there. And as I usually mention too, that the trophy piker there typically have to go to the larger systems for those if you're really interested in a fish over 15 pounds. Uh, you want to focus on some bigger water, but lots of four to, you know, eight pounders out there in, in a lot of district lakes. So the opportunities for pike, they're definitely out there. Yeah, I would say it's as good as it's been, you know, for at least 10 to 15 years. It's been pretty stable. Okay, let's move into your perch populations. Based on our, our sampling efforts this summer, there are definitely some perch lakes that are out there that have, you know, a lot of those 12 to 13, you know, maybe 14 inch perch that, you know, if the conditions are right and they turn on, it, you know, it, it could be really good. Last year, the Hobart system was good and we found that in our trap and transport efforts this spring and in, in our standard adult that there was a you know a fairly substantial size increase in terms of individual fish in there. So, you know, I would expect the fish to be a little larger in both South Hobart and North Hobart. You know, South has been traditionally kind of a you know smaller fish in general, so people have steered away from that, but it might be a little different this winter. And then not too far from there, North Eccleson um, is you know, got some promise as far as perch, you know, numbers and size wise. BJ, in addition to walleye, pike and perch, you have some tremendous crappie opportunities in yes. the Southeast, explain yeah. those. Um, you know, as I usually mention, and it still continues to hold true, Jamestown Reservoir is uh, probably the best crappie fishery in the state. Uh, the population is strong. We've seen this summer, we actually saw some a little release, if you call it that, uh, as far as growth rates go. So, um, you know, a fair amount of crappies are in that 11, 11 to 12 inch range. And for those anglers that historically fish that, they know that, you know, well, there seemed to be a lot of 10 inches in there, but there wasn't much over that. And now it seems that they're finally getting a little larger. Uh, in general, you know, it's a fairly old population. A lot of 11 to 12, 12 year old fish in there now. Um, but the good thing is, is we do have some recruitment. So we got the, you know, the four and five year olds behind them. 
uh, which are almost the same size as, as the ones that are you know, older. But um, that and another one that's kind of is, is blossoming again, you know, would be uh, like Grass Lake uh, down in the southeast. The crappies are really responding well. We had a winter killing there in, in 18 and, and, you know, they lost the population, but they've really rebounded well. And I would imagine that people start catching a few there now and then not too far away from there would be Tossie Slough, which, you know, we started stocking that one, I want to say about six years ago with some brood stock, and they have done really well as far as recruitment. So. You know, they're a little on the small side, but you know, there are a lot of crappies in there. So maybe not so much this winter as far as size, give it another year, but uh, you know, you know, next spring and, and next year, certainly should be some nicer fish too, so. Any other fish species in the Southeast that anglers target in the wintertime? You know, there's some bluegill fishing that happens and every year anglers find some success at Brewer Lake, um, you know, and then Dead Coal Creek. Um, some, some success at the smaller impoundments that we have bluegills in. You know, Pheasant Lake down by Ellendale has a good bluegill population in it, but a lot of those panfish, like when I say panfish, I mean bass, bluegill type fisheries, don't receive a lot of angling pressure, if you will. Anything else anglers should be aware of this winter in the southeast? Yeah, we've got a, a little project here on Jamestown Reservoir dealing with, you know, we've got some interest in, in the fishery there. It's been, uh, about 20 years since we had a creel survey on Jamestown Reservoir. So we're gonna be doing a creel survey there this winter, get an idea of what, uh, what our constituents are now versus 20 years ago. Uh, we're kind of interested in seeing how folks maybe are spending their time in terms of where they're fishing. You know, we've got, as I mentioned, tremendous amount more opportunities on landscape within you know 20 miles or so of Jamestown. So, we're kind of curious to see how that might play in, comparing it to the effort that we've had before. And then also, you know, we're uh, interested in the crappie fishing and, and, and how anglers perhaps have changed their perceptions a little bit. You know, 20 years ago, the main focus on Jameson Reservoir was walleye. I don't expect it to be a drastic difference, but in general, the walleye fishing on Jameson Reservoir hasn't been what it has you know, historically been, but the crappies on the other hand have been kind of the thing that's been getting the attention. So. That's what we're doing, and we'll be doing that probably in the summer as well. So, and, and, and it won't take a lot of anglers' time, and I just want to remind folks that, you know, we do this to try to best manage the fishery because ultimately when we talk to you, we like to get, you know, input on thoughts and ideas and ultimately how to manage your fishery. Right, so if this winter, if the weather allows, ice fishing in the southeast should be good. It should. and. The, the populations are there, and like I said, for whatever reason, some some years the fish bite better than others. I mean, some some years you just have phenomenal bites everywhere, and you know uh, it is what it is. But it's not because the fish aren't there. It's just we'll see what happens. A lot of great information, BJ. Thank you. Thank you.